So it's Marchintosh, and this little LC has been working overtime on Global Talk. What's Global Talk? Well, it's the Marchintosh phenomenon that is using Apple Talk, a discontinued proprietary networking standard that Apple had for, well, now vintage Macs, but using it globally. That way, users can connect to other vintage Macs anywhere in the world on the Global Talk network. And it's awesome. And I love it. And it's been a ridiculously huge time suck in a good way. Let's check it out. All right. Well, I apologize for not having video capture on this LC, but the video looks pretty good, all things considered. So this is my period correct Macintosh LC running system software 7.1 with 4 megs of RAM and currently as you can see my largest unused block is 589k so this is a pretty authentic experience for back in the day now uh, I do expect to do another Marchintosh video where I do give this guy some well needed upgrades look forward to that but this is about global talk and this isn't a global talk how to video it's just my experiences because I think as global talk matures we'll have much better procedures on joining the club so to say so if we look here in my network information I have 53 networks 40 zones and look at all of these wonderful people on here some creators you might remember like Mac 84 one bit there's a lot of really great people here joining in the global talk fun so you might be wondering well what do we do with this what is global talk well it's basically like a apple talk network you might have had in the late 80s early 90s at your university or your place of business and it's a early network so we can go over to chooser here and let's see who's online and who I can connect to. So this is all real time on real hardware. There's no emulation here. This is connected directly to the internet. So if we look in Chooser right now, this is all of the Apple Talk zones that are available. Let's just go through here. I'll pick somebody. Now most of these people I've already connected to and I've already given them my calling card. Uh, but let's let's take a look at Eric. So. We'll click on Eric Edge, make sure we have Apple Share enabled, because we can print to people's printers if they have that. Uh, let's see if he has what's on his Power Mac G3. We'll hit connect. Oh, nope, can't connect to that one. And you, and you see it because it had no guest available. So we'll look at Eric Edge proper. Right, there we go. So now do we want to connect to the file server Eric Edge as a guest. His public share folder. Now, right now, my LC is connecting to Eric's computer. Let's close the chooser. And now you see on my desktop, I now have this public share folder. And I can open it up, and I am now navigating in Eric's public share on his computer. How cool is that? Um, and it's actually pretty snappy, all things considered. So this is part of the fun right there there's some people share files a lot of people share calling cards or as some of us who have a, a ham or radio background called qsl and basically that's what it is so i know i'm jumping around here but every time i use global talk it's exciting right um there is a hyper card global talk chat where you can actually go and chat real time with people unfortunately this poor little lc doesn't have enough ram to do that and connect to the network at the same time but look at this so i'm going through these files here and eric is, has a lot of people who visit him so he has all these little greetings and notes from different people ron from ron's computer visit videos has a really great icon pack he did a video on that there's a lot of people just having a lot of fun with this so i'm going to open up the chooser again and see if there's somebody who i haven't connected to and i haven't given them my file yet maybe safety third or scrappy i don't remember connecting to these I do have a list somewhere of um, all the people I connected to. I just scribbled it down on a notepad. All right, let's look at his 2FX. 
applications for. Maybe he has some cool stuff on there we can grab. And you know, this really reminds me of early days of computing and how exciting the internet and networking was. Um, you know, when I was in college, we had a, a LAN in our dorm, and it was really cool to be able to go to other people's computers and, you know, share the music or files or, or anything they had. That, that was the great thing about it. All right, so let's take a look here. We have the Simpsons icon. So I have, I've, I've used a Simpsons icon pack. I borrowed that from somebody. Let's see what games he's got. Crystal Craze, Crystal Quest, Kid Picks. Lemmings, Christmas Lemmings. All right, you know what? Let's real time, I might speed it up. Let's see how long it's going to take for me to copy Lemmings over. First, let's take a look at this file. All right, so just over a meg. So let's, let's take a look. So I am going to copy this over to, I have a, applications folder myself this is my shared folder right here downloads we're going to put this into my programs let's clean up the screen a little bit and we're going to do this in real time just to let you see how snappy it is All right, so it might not have been as quick as what you expected, and sure, it would have been easier and faster to download it on my modern machine and then transfer it over my blue SCSI, but you know what? This was authentic. This was real, and it's it's just more fun this way because you know what? Now, here it is from one vintage Mac to another one. I got it here in my programs file. I mean, that... The, the novelty factor on this is really, really high to me, and that's what I love the most about it because, you know, th this is really, and, and, and let's be honest, right, Global Talk is, it's just Apple Talk over the internet, right? I don't want to, you know, downgrade what it is, but this is for enthusiasts. There are a bunch of other vintage Macintosh friends online doing this right now because we love the hobby. We love just doing really great things like this. And it's just part of the fun of looking through what people have. I mean, there's a lot of useful programs in here, right? If you had a, you know, maybe a fresh install and you wanted to get, you know, stuff at Super Paint, stuff like that, these are programs you're going to need anyway. Um, why download them off the internet when you can just download them from somebody else's computer? Now, I think. I think I gave him my calling card, but you know what? We'll show you. We'll show you what it's like. And it's very similar to when I took his folder. You know, we'll drag this over, open up our downloads. So this is my calling card right here. I also have a Word document that I print to people's printers. Uh, it's, you know, it's nothing too fancy. There it is, just quick and simple, you know, less than half a page that I will send out to people's printers all over the world, giving them a quick little greetings from myself in New Hampshire, United States. But we really want to talk about my visual calling card. That is what I leave on other people's computers. So we're just going to take it from my downloads folder, and we're going to drag it over to that Dropbox, and we'll let it do its work. And done. Now he has my calling card to add to his collection. How how great is that? Now, early on in our Global Talk experiments, a lot of us, myself included, got infected with an old obsolete computer virus called NVIR. And this is a Macintosh virus that would hit any machine from system four to system eight. So 4.1 to OS 8. And, you know, it's kind of, 
it, it's funny now to look back that, you know, in 2024, we're being hit with a 20 plus, you know, almost 30 year old virus on our vintage machines running in a network. So we did a lot of mitigation. There was, um, I don't want to say running around like crazy, but there was a lot of back channel communication on, well, what do we do with this virus? Now, the virus itself, I mean, you would get an audio prompt. Um, I think your machine would shut down. It, it In the grand scheme of things, it's not as bad, but it's annoying. The point is we had a virus and we were sharing it because all of our machines were networked together. So there was a pre-made image of 7.1. That image was recreated scanned and then proper software was installed to prevent this from happening again and myself and some other global talk users have a hashtag safe hex or similar folder where other users can go on here and download disinfectant or virex so you can scan your machine and make sure that we're not spreading 30 year old viruses as we share programs back and forth so that is the upload and download process, but how do we know and what do I do during the day? So this LC is on 24-7 at least through Marchintosh. I might leave it on more or I might periodically check back. But if we look at the file sharing monitor, here's my machine, my RCOD LC. Right now, I only have the shared items folder, that downloads folder is open. But as people connect, it'll pop up saying guest, guest, guest. Since we're all just connecting as guests and no registered users, I won't see a registered user name. But I would see guests pop up there. And the coolest part, in my opinion, is this little file sharing activity. As people connect and as they're uploading and downloading files, this bar will increase and it's just it's just really exciting to see in 2024 somebody connecting to my mac lc over the internet and sharing files it's just ah it's just so cool um and, and i know I'm, I'm gushing over it but you know what um it's just it's just really sweet. So this machine, I did reset it on the 20th. I'm recording this on the 22nd right now. Um, so over 8,000 packets have been received, network reliability of 100%. Now, I did say the LC has been running constantly. It has been. However, every once in a while, I will go and add more network zones as our list populates. I don't want to go too much into the backbone of Global Talk. Um, there's a website for it, marchtosh.com. There is a Global Talk link. I'll have that link in the description and it'll be up on the page right now. There are instructions on joining this. Go through that. This isn't a how-to video on how to join Global Talk. I'm just really just gushing over my experiences because I just, I absolutely love this and you know let's just open up my dropbox i had 24 visitors i might have had more but i had 24 people drop off their calling cards so why don't we look at some of these i'm going to do this in emulation that way i can actually look at them i do frequently back this up with uh, an external blue scuzzy so let's pop over to my emulator and take a look at some of the visitors i had so first, let's take a look at my calling card. This is the official RTOD QSL coming soon to a Global Talk network computer near you. You see, it is a little pixelated. I had to compress this a lot. I got this down to, let's see, click on the file here. It's really small. 16K, look at that. I wanted a deliberately small file that I could send to everybody. You know, my only regret with this is I probably should have put a QR code up here. Maybe I'll have a revision too. But, you know, that's half of this. Sending is fun, but receiving is better. And these are 24 items that I've received so far on March and Tosh. And let's take a look at some of these. We got DOS Fox over here with a really cool rendering. This is a really great QSL because it's done in HyperCard and we get sound. 
How great is that? And you see, we got people's websites. We got Mastodon links down there. Here is uh, my friend Garth Beagle. Let's see what Garth sent over. Look at that. Squawkers. All right, we got one bit down here. And like this is just, this is part of the novelty. And this is why I really love it. Because it's great to see friends from all over the world and even people who I've never interacted with before visit my machine and send a little drop off. Look at this one here. All the way from Japan, a PowerBook 540C connected to Global Talk. Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? Like, like this is just so cool. And, you know, some people just do little folders, right? So, Likes Old Mac was here, made a little folder just with his name on it, nothing in it. That's fine. Some people will make folders with custom icons for it, and that's that's all perfect. Let's see what this is. Oh, stay away from that guy. Steve Bad Dude. And, of course, here's Eric. This is my first one that I got. Um, it was really nice to finally get Global Talk working, see somebody connect, and then realize that Eric was the first guy to connect and drop off. Just, it's really cool. And, and I get it. Some people won't understand the novelty. But you know what? I do. And right now, as I'm recording this, I think there's 88 people signed up or at least registered for the global talk network um 88 people all over the world here the whole way from sunny brisbane australia giving me their little global talk sharings how great is this so as Marchintosh comes to a close, I really hope that Global Talk isn't a passing fad. I hope that, you know, we use it more than just annually for Marchintosh because I think the greatest benefit to Global Talk is directly putting files on these old machines that doesn't involve transferring with blue SCSI and dealing with stuff on modern machines, transferring SD cards over. We could just do everything on this machine. And it really scratches an itch to experience what it was like transferring files 25, 30 years ago on vintage machines. But I do see a lot of potential here. And I think as Global Talk matures, as we get more and more users, and we get it a little safer and open it up to the greater community for anybody to join. I see a lot of potential in bringing back life to these machines on the internet, bringing chat clients, better file servers, and games. Think of all the online connected games that we can do on vintage machines like this. So before I close it out, I really encourage you to go to Marchintosh.com. I'll have a link in the description. There's a lot of information about Marchintosh. What is it? What do we do? Who are the creators? But also the Global Talk page on there. It'll tell you everything you know to get initially set up. And I think as we progress and we grow more with Global Talk as a vintage Mac community, we're going to have better instructions sent out there. They're going to be more polished. And at that time, I'll probably release a how-to video on setting up Global Talk. So I hope you enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and we'll catch you next time.